For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Before you build your doors, you have to have a frame. And I like to use two bys for my frame on the outside. All I did was make a straight cut here, straight cut over there, and put a top piece, like a header, right across the top. Now, I use deck board, five quarter, for my sides. You can use anything you want. You really don't even need it if you don't want it. But I like the look of it. It gives it some nice strength. It looks beefy. And it finishes off this, this face. I was able to rip a piece off of here to make it match my two by, two by plus a half inch sheathing that I have. I need a quarter inch off of each side. That's what I want. And right here. So that's three quarters of an inch I'm gonna take off of this. All right? So we have 64 and three quarters. That means I'm gonna go with 64 on my width. Total width. That's with both of them. And I'll show you one's gonna lap the other. No big deal. All right, so we have 64 inches. And then our height is 76 and a half, all right? So I'm gonna take a quarter inch off the bottom, quarter inch off the top. So what's that give me? 76 even. We're gonna stop right here because I wanna explain something to you that's really important. I wanna show you a close up of the doors. So I made some small sample ones and you can see how the lap is gonna be done on here. I tell you to take off a quarter inch for each gap, like here, here, and one in the center. That's three quarters of an inch off the frame the total frame. The reason why I say that is because it gives you enough room. You're not going to necessarily need a quarter inch off the sides, but you could pull it if you want it. Now, if it tightens up on the sides and you only have an eighth of an inch, you're going to have a little bit more than a quarter inch gap right here. But it does not matter because we pull this lip over a full inch and we cut this back a full inch. Even if I cut this to half inch, I'm still good. But if you take it over a full inch, you still have plenty enough room to move this back and forth. You don't want it touching, but you can have it really close if you want. This wood is going to shrink some, the two bys. Now, the, the plywood is not going to shrink, but this will shrink a little bit and give you a, a slightly bigger gap, which is no big deal. It's all going to work right. I like to make sure that they're all in line, so what I'll do is after making a mark on each one, I'll line the boards up in the back end, and I'll use one big square to mark them off. I'm going to put my blade right on that edge right here, but the outside edge, not the inside, because this is an eighth of an inch blade. So that carbide tip right there will take an eighth of an inch off, and you'll be short. I won't have 76, I'll have 75 and 7 eighths. I need six boards at 24 and a half inches. But what I'm going to do is cut three now, put one frame together, and make sure everything's right. Then we will do the other. Because if I do both and I'm off, then I, I have a problem. If I do one, I can always make the other door a slight, slight bit bigger and I'll match it up. Or, you know, make it a little smaller, either way. These are absolutely my favorite sawhorses and tables by Works. It's the Pegasus, and I use them all the time. I own about six of them. They gave me one, and two of them gave me one to give away, and they gave me another one for myself, and I've been buying them at Lowe's since. You can get them on Amazon, or you can get them directly at Lowe's. They have them on the shelf. This board's an inch and a half thick, so I don't want to go past three quarters of an inch. I'll put a piece of tape just to show you. I eyeball it because I do it all the time, but if I'm doing this right now, I would show you I'm about five eighths of an inch down. No more than three quarter at the most. I'm about an inch and a half back. Go to my tape, about an inch and a half back. Go to my tape. We gotta take this off. I just wanted to show you where I'm stopping at. Now after I do that, I'm spinning it as I turn. And you see I'm biting into this part. And I'll go in just a little bit, like that. Come here. Go down. 
when I lay my screw in, I try to get it in like that. I don't let it go in like this because it's going to come out there. I lay it flat. That's why I groove it way back. I lay it flat, as flat as I can. Now if I run this in here, see where it's coming out at? That's a little bit lower, but it's not going down out of the board. That's what you want. Okay, you see this is a, the cross grain. That's the end grain. You want to try to screw your end grain into your cross grain whenever you're doing something like this. There are times when I have to do it the opposite way, but I'm gluing it and there's not a lot of stress on the piece of wood that I'm using. If you're doing something structural, you want to have it going into the cross grain. Once you I get this set up to where it looks the same for you don't have to do it like this, but I like to keep it as even as I can if I have a sheet that allows me to do that. If not, I use my cutouts for my sheet a lot of times. But I wound up using my cutouts this time for the uh for the triangles because I had a low pitch I was able to use a sheet and just rip all those triangles out of it the sheets that were cut out from my door so I have a nice fresh sheet for this that way I can lay this out exactly where I want perfect man I like to have a right and a left-handed saw because sometimes you want to cut with the blade on the left side so you can see your blade and sometimes you want to have your blade on the right side so you can see it when I'm cutting on that end that's why I have these two saws. Um, I love both of these saws for their own purpose. This is fantastic for sheet goods because it has a little guide. I put this board directly on my line. I don't have to backspace measuring. I drop it directly on my line. This is going to follow the line. I can mimic boards. Sheet goods, this thing's great. It's not heavy enough for a lot of studs. That's why I love this saw. This is my Milwaukee saw, and this isn't even their biggest saw. This is their smallest cordless saw that I, that I found at Home Depot, and I love it. So, I use this saw for my, for my heavier goods. Now, if I have a cord uh, where I have access to a cord, of course, I use my bigger saws. I have a worm drive and some other ones, but when you're going cordless, these are fantastic. And uh, I'll tell you, I've been super pleased with the, the power of this cordless saw and the platform. Milwaukee has a huge platform. 150 tools will work off of this battery, this M18. And uh, it lasts a good while. So you get a couple of these batteries, you can run on jobs all day long. All right. You will lay your board upside down. Now we'll lay the other one on top of it and screw it together. I could cut this off if I want. I'm not worried about it. I'll leave it there because it just goes right against the back edge. Nobody sees it. If you want to cut it off, go ahead and cut this off and start here. This is important. This side is going to have my lip, so when I close the door, I have something behind it to stop it, and I'll have something behind it to block the air and bugs. So I'm going to come over one inch all the way. Top of my door, I want the top of the hinge to go 10 inches. I marked a line at 10 inches on from the bottom and from the top, and that's where the top pin will go, and on the bottom of it, the bottom of my pin will go with that line. So they're they'll be in, in line with each other. So let's make some room here. I'll set it up to where it's just flush on the wall. 
or I can pinch it both ways. That way it won't bind. I'll use a pre-drill. Start them off. I have a half inch socket. On that half inch socket, I get these little uh, adapters. You can get these at Harbor Freight. I get them all the time. You'll get a three pack. You'll have a, a quarter, a half, and a three eighths, or a quarter, three eighths, and a half. And this all comes in one little pack for about five something. You can get them on sale all the time for less. Or you can get them at any one of your major or hardware stores. Also, I'll have a link in the description box if you want to just order it online. You could do that as well. It's easy to find these things. I keep them in my bag with my with my drills and my torque guns because they always come in handy. You always need these things. right because it's very very close I should have ripped this earlier I forgot um, when I put the overlap on here I have this behind it and this is on my my wood so I'll just rip it off no big deal I'm just gonna take that off and when I close it back on here I got it perfect I take my door and I close it to where it's it's not overextended it's just closed so um, I can take and push this right up against my back of my door and tack it in place okay I'll hit my other side and then we'll put the top piece on take this one we'll do the same thing we'll just close it to where it's nice and snug pop it in place. I'm using a Ryobi nail gun. This is an airstrike with two inch nails. It's an 18 gauge nail gun. Pretty cool little tool. I've had this for a few years and I'll, I'll work it all the time. Never had a problem. Let's put this baby to the test so we can move on to the trim. I get approached by companies all the time asking me to check out their tools. If I like a tool, I will show you guys and I will push it. If I don't, I'll let them know that they need to tweak something or I don't like it and I'm not going to show it. So when I get inventors like me to come to me and they're having a hard time getting their product out to where everybody can see it, I'm more than willing to help. And this guy came to me with a new tool that he has that's really a cool tool. I like it a lot. He needs some feedback, and I want you guys to help me out on it. So please drop a comment, and he will give one away, and he has some other giveaways. I'm not making anything on this. I just want to help the guy out, and if you guys can do the same, I'd really appreciate it. What it does is it mounts onto your ladder so you can get on the roof or on siding. It has standoffs to bring you off, but it has these rails that makes it a lot safer than just trying to climb up the ladder. Once you set this up, it makes things so much easier and so much safer. This 16 foot fiberglass ladder is rated at 300 pounds, but it's really a pretty light ladder to, to drag around. Check out the bottom of this standoff. They have these pads right here. They're called the original soft touch bumpers. Now these, I really like. You can set it up against your siding, whether it's vinyl siding or, or wood siding. My old standoffs, I would have to put rags on here because they would scratch or mar my my surface. You could take these pads off and replace them. I think they're about a little over $20 for a set and uh, to me they're worth it. If you look on my Louisville ladder you will see this little latch connect right here. You push this down that locks it in place to where it cannot go up and down. It locks it. But the inventor recommends that you use these as a safety precaution. This is a U-bolt. I will put it right on the end next to my rail on the rung and we will lock these two rungs together. So you'll take your wing nuts just like you had on the other U-bolts 
and you put them on here. You're good. Once you're up here, you'll take your rails and you push them. You can slide them all the way up. There's a screw right here that'll stop it from going too far and you'll tighten them up. Now you're ready to climb. You can take this, step on it backwards, but it gives you a very good sense of security. Just don't go overboard. All right, remember you're on a ladder. This system is made for residential and commercial use. It really will save guys in the commercial industry because you have to worry less about your insurance if you have guys getting on and off safely. I'm gonna use it for this because I can get up there and just blow my leaves easily, put my ladder on the side and I'm done. Or I get up there to fix fascia like I did earlier. So we'll get this, get up there. Well, you see why I like this thing so much? That's gonna be my designated roof ladder from now on.